Hello and welcome to Buy Africa, the show where we focus on investment opportunities around the continent. I'm your host, Tsepo Mudiba, and thanks for joining me. Tonight, I'm joined by Tabo Ngalo, Portfolio Manager at Stanlib, and today we're taking a closer look at Sanotel and BOA, the Senegalese listing on BRVM. Tabo, uh, let's start with the market as a whole. Uh, BRVM, interesting idea, actually works quite nicely. Your thoughts on, on, on the market? As a whole? Yeah, good evening, Atepo. I think, you know, the PIVM is very interesting because I think it also speaks to that regional integration we've all been talking about, sure. particularly around regional integration of stock exchanges. Yeah. So if you look at the PIVM, it's, uh, it's a market, it has a market cap of about between 10 and 11 million dollars, obviously move, uh, moving on, uh, on a daily basis. Yep. Um, but it's a market that covers, that covers eight countries domiciled in Abidjan in, in Cote d'Ivoire, yep. uh, but it covers markets such as uh, Mali, such as, uh, you know, Benin, uh, so you know, particularly the West, the, the, the West African, uh, the, sorry, the French speaking uh, West African countries, uh, the Wyoming countries. So it, it's a great idea. And I think it, it helps a lot, I guess, you know, it minimizes, you know, the admin of running, you know, each country having a stock exchange, particularly because some of those, those economies are, are, are still very small. Mm. And, and I guess by aggregating it, um, it provides potentially greater liquidity um, to companies that may not get get it otherwise that's that's correct i mean if you look at for instance if you compare to to east africa where every country is sort of now uh, opening its own exchange you know malawi has an exchange which is very liquid uh you know malawi could have been traded from from other markets neighboring uh, markets if they consolidate particularly with, with market like zambia as an example so the bfvm uh, you know helps to to consolidate some of the smaller markets like mali uh guinea bissau etc which are very small countries very small economies and i think it also helps from an international investor's perspective for you to have one entry into a market that gives you exposure to many countries. Uh, it makes it easier from a setup perspective, from a trading perspective, from a custody perspective, to be dealing with, with one market and, and be able to access all these countries that are integrated anyway into one monetary uh, unit. Uh. Now, certainly, do we, do we think that there's a chance for greater integration across the continent or not likely? Look, I think it will happen at some point. I think it has to be forced. <laughs> uh, and, and sometimes market, the markets might self might force it, you know. Sure. I think we've seen in the world uh, where stock exchanges have been privatizing. Um, and, and we know stock exchanges with a private motive will now look at the, their profitability, will now look at their liquidity, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think it will happen, uh, but I think it's a matter of time. I think now you, it's a little bit like what happens in the airline industry, sure. where every country needs their own flag carrier in a sense. <laughs> uh, but eventually yeah. people do sober up and realize that this is too expensive for us to run. So it could happen, I think, but I think for now, let's give it a bit more time. Yeah. Sure. And, and just as importantly, some people are better at running a market than others. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, if we delve down into Senegal in particular, um, I like talking about banks, so let's start with the bank. Sure. Um, uh, BOA, uh, Senegal, your, your thoughts on, on the company? Very interesting economy, Senegal. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, people might know Senegal is one of the most stable countries economically and, and politically in, in West Africa. Yeah. Um, it's driven mainly, I mean, as we've seen in the last couple of years, it's been driven mainly by, uh, by financial services and telecoms. Yeah. So it's actually very interesting that today you want to speak about both Sen uh, BOA and, uh, and, uh, and Sonatel. Right. So, I mean, there was a, a big fear, of course, with Ebola, et cetera, that the tourism numbers were going to come off uh, mm -hmm. in, in Senegal. And we saw those, obviously, you know, tourism being affected in, uh, in, in, in Senegal. So the key industries that have been, you know, pushing that economy, that economy has been growing now about four and a half percent in terms of what you, if you look at the 2014 figures. And that's been driven mainly by financial services and, uh, and telecoms. Mm. So in the case of BOE, I mean, Bank of Africa is, is, is present in, in many, many countries across uh, Africa, uh, particularly operating in, in Francophone Africa. Yep. Uh, it's in about 16 countries, also in, in, in East Africa. So in Senegal, I mean, you're seeing that, 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 that economy, I mean, I think I mentioned earlier that economy has about, or that country has about 13 million people. Yep. Um, and we're looking at financial inclusion, we're looking at, at growing the size of, uh, of people who are banked in that economy. Yep. So you're seeing a bank like BOE as an example, last year's uh, figures, they're growing deposits by over 30%. Right. They're growing uh, their loan book by over 35%. So, you know, these are kind of figures, very encouraging figures for you to start seeing that at least the bank is, is, is making quite heavy inroads um, into growing their loan book and into making, uh, you know, growing the size of their balance sheet uh, as we've seen them doing over the last few years. No, I know BOA has been winning market share specifically in Senegal, but um, is part of that growth a function of the broader banking sector actually doing well and growing um, with the economy? That's correct. I mean, if you if you if you take a you know a banking sector growth as a percentage of GDP growth or some multiplier, right. uh, I, I did I mentioned four and a half percent. So I mean, you seeing some of these these banks 
disagree in their loan books at 30% plus, you know, which right. is now, you know, multiples over, over what the GDP growth is. And that's also a result of financial products that aren't there in that economy that, that still need to be rolled out, you know. Right. Um, I think we haven't seen the type of growth you've seen, for instance, in a market like Kenya or East Africa, where um, financial inclusion has been driven mainly by telecoms or has been driven by, by other banks, such as, for instance, Equity Bank, you know, that have had yes. a different uh, model. Yeah. So we, we're still seeing a very traditional banking model in, uh, in West Africa, particularly in Senegal. Yeah. Um, and, and I think as, as, you as, as you liberalize and you include more people, particularly by liberalizing uh, how people get into the banks, mm. uh, liberalizing KYC, all of these, all these issues, I think you're still going to see massive growth out of the, the banking sector in, uh, in, in Senegal. Uh, if I touch on the loan book in particular, how the nature of that economy, what's that split into? Are you looking at, uh, at, at property loans or are you looking at uh, um, <coughs> uh, what type of, what's, what's the structure of the so, loan? So, I mean, typical, like as you find in many banks in Africa, you know, it's driven mainly by the corporate uh, side. Yeah. So in, in Senegal, for instance, you've seen the Chinese investing a lot in infrastructure, in construction. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen the banks also participating in some of these infrastructure projects in, uh, in, in, in the country. Mm. So if you look at a bank like, like, um, uh, like BOA, for instance, I mean, it's supported, for instance, I mean, I, 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 I did mention earlier that BOA is also uh, owned by, by BMC Eve out of, uh, out of Morocco. Yep. Um, and I think we've seen the Moroccans come in with, with, with slightly different ideas and, and more innovative ideas around how to shift that bank up. You know, I guess, and, and and we've seen it go into into more structured products, into uh, you know, as I mentioned, more growing the the, the, the corporate loan book, right. uh, and I think that's that that's helped to that's been the main driver uh, essentially of, uh, of 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 the growth there. But I think we do want to see, and we, we are still seeing some retail uh, uh, loan book growth, mm -hmm. and of course, that's still hampered by issues such as KYC, as I mentioned, right. uh, and other sort of you know simple impediments for uh, for growing the sector. Um, now, Senegal in particular, how's the banking penetration of that market? Uh, is it broadly banked or, or, or not it's, quite? It's still very low. Yeah. Um, uh, even I, I think across West Africa, banking penetration is still very low. Which is surprising, actually. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very surprising, but I think you also find, I mean, the, the, the rural population, and just like in many uh, African countries, is still pretty large, you know, and uh, the use of, of financial instruments, as, as we understand them, I guess, is not that, 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 that advanced. So I think we still have a long way to go, um, which is why I think you're seeing entrants, like for Morocco, for, for example, coming into West Africa to try to tap into uh, that that, that mm -hmm. growth in banking penetration because they also realize that their own markets aren't growing as fast as, uh, as, as they'd like to. Sure. So I guess um, on the one hand it's a negative but for going forward it bodes well for potential growth. That's correct. Yeah. I mean, it's a question. You, you hear you're playing with uh, with the economy. Mm. So I mean, I think the World Bank was looking at at, at growth of about four and four four point seven four point eight percent for for Senegal going into the into next year. Mm. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, I think the banking sector is going to keep on growing faster and faster. Mm. Uh, you've seen uh, you know uh, you know, more and more investors coming from the U.S. from China, especially coming into Senegal, mm. uh, as they've seen you no know, more stability in that country, both politically and and economically. Mm. Um, and I think we 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 we're going to see more and more investment going into fishing as an example mm -hmm. and you're going to see the banking sectors driving more and more money into you know s these sectors such as I mean tourism when it picks up will also contribute quite well into uh, into the loan pool growth of these banks yeah okay now that coupled with the numbers um, is this one that uh, piques your interest uh, should investors be taking a closer look you know for, for us unfortunately it's uh, the liquidity is an issue for us right. uh, so we prefer to invest more in more in more the liquid names uh, the liquid banks are larger names in Africa yep. so it's, it's an interesting stock for us uh, there's also BOE for uh, the Benin subsidiary also listed. Right. So it's it's. I mean, if, if you could sort of get the the overall, I guess the, the whole group, uh, that might be uh, probably a better play sure. for us. But but I mean, look, it's it's it's. I think if you are investing in the BRVM alone or investing in Senegal alone, uh, it's one thing I would look at. Sure. Uh, but for us, unfortunately, it's, it's too liquid, a little bit too small for us to to consider at this point. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, let's shift our attention um, to the other big sector uh, in Senegal. Um, so Natal. Um, your thoughts on the business? We love Sonatel. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I, I like I, that. Declare it right <laughs> up front. <laughs> let's, let's say it up front. You know, let's not go too far there. <laughs> Look, so, so, uh, Sonatel is one of the, the you know it's one of the largest stocks in the BRVM. It's the, probably the most liquid stock on the BRVM. Uh, it's a telco, the biggest in in Sen in, uh, in Senegal, mm -hmm. uh, part owned by Orange, uh, the French uh, telecom. So it's it's uh, it, it has a huge presence. I mean, they're now looking to even get into their fifth country in in West Africa. Right. Um, you know, Senegal. I think the market always has always liked it because. It 
it, 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 it has a very high dividend yield. Yep. Uh, it, 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 it's always, uh, you know, trading on call it a seven and a half to eight eight percent dividend yield. Right. Um, and for us, that's quite attractive. I mean, it, it all, almost behaves like almost like a bond in a sense, you know, at eight percent right. dividend yield. And it's been high, obviously, as the stock has, has moved up and down. So it's, it, it's a stock. I think it's a it's, it's one that's quite core to many people's portfolios. Mm. Um, and it's one we, we, we like and prefer and on the telco space in Africa. Yeah. Um, and the the business as a whole operationally not just focused on the mobile side a little bit of fixed um, your assessment of um, how the different units are doing I think the business is doing quite well I think what we want to see going forward is obviously a growth in data mm. uh, because I mean I think that's the trend you you all see across the telcos in both in Africa and, and across the world yep. um, and and if you look at uh, Sonatel Sonatel for instance owns or, 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 or has put down about two or two point two uh, thousand kilometers of, of fiber in in, in Senegal yep. um, and I think that bodes quite well for, for where the growth could potentially come from as they continue to grow their um, you know the, the, the data penetration in that country sure. so I think data for us is one we we, we we're looking to see quite strongly from a from a product line perspective right. of course voice uh, you know as in many markets will start to to taper off and you know plateau a little bit and inevitably margins will get squeezed that's voice. correct yeah <laughs> but I think what's very interesting about Senegal at the moment is is the, the other countries you know uh, the growth is actually coming from markets surprisingly like Mali mm. uh, and, and Guinea so if you look at the Senegal's uh, revenue at the moment uh, about 30 percent of it now comes from from Mali uh, and we've actually seen on, if you look at the, the, the you know, last year's results, uh, uh, FY14 numbers, we actually had a huge surprise in margins from, uh, from, from Mali. We had EBITDA margins actually uh, getting to about 50%. So I think that, wow. you know, when you have a business that contributes a third to your, to your, your top line, uh, and it's coming at, at quite nice margins, at 50% EBITDA margins, um, I think we're still going to see quite, quite, quite good growth coming out of, uh, out of uh, uh, the market for, for Senegal, sorry, for, for Sonatel. Sure. Okay, um, so, well, you've declared right up front that this is a <laughs> stock you like. Um, a lot of uh, positive, it's not built into the price? It sounds like a, a good story, not built into the price quite yet. We, we don't think so. I mean, we think there's still a bit more upside to the, to the stock. I mean, I think personally, I mean, we look at that stock trading at least at 27, uh, 1,000 CFA franc and above. Sure. Um, and I think it's the, if, you, if you compare, I mean, it's trading on 11 times, uh, you know, 10 times PE. Um, and, and you know, with, with the kind of growth we're looking at, we, we, we're forecasting or we're looking for, call it 10 to 11 percent EPS growth uh, into, the, into the coming year. So, I mean, if you, if, you, if you factor all those numbers in, I mean, we still see quite nice, uh, quite, quite good growth coming through. The one other encouraging issue with Senegal is that they, oh, sorry, with Sonatel, is they, they, they've cut their capex and they're looking to cut their capex going forward. And as we know, once these telcos start cutting, cutting their capex, right. they start paying out more in dividends sure. uh, and, and we're looking to, to get that dividend yet up uh, and of course get more cash out of, uh, out of the company over the next year or so. Perfect. Let's leave it there. That's all from Buy Africa this week. Thanks to my guest, Thabo Ngalo, Portfolio Manager at Standard. Remember to follow us on Twitter. That's at Mudiba underscore Tapo. And uh, Tabo, your uh, Twitter handle? It's, uh, it's at Tabo Ngalo, all one word. Perfect. Um, so remember to send us your thoughts about the show using the hashtag Buy Africa from myself and the team. Goodbye.